Thank you for watching this video. Today I am going to show you how to make fig jam. Back in the days I remember I was home in France and uh, my grandma used to treat us from time to time with some dried figs and that's all I knew about figs and they were quite a treat. He took me to come to Texas to find out that uh, actually how they grow on a tree and that we could uh, grow them in Texas. Then I uh, learned how delicious they are. I started experimenting with making delicious fig jam. Uh, the benefit of the fig jam is that I made it with half the amount of sugar using uh, stevia, which is a fairly good natural product and extract of relief. Half of it stevia and half of it sugar to make it lower in carbs. It's delicious, it's sweet as a jam, rich in nutrients. And today, helping me with this project, this is our feature Lee, Jackie Dan. Frozen figs. During the season, we harvest them and put them in the freezer. And now we let them thaw out and then we're gonna trim them and get ready for the jam. These figs are from friends of ours who own a ranch in Texas. You can still see a little bit of the frost here. Uh, they are semi thawed out. Now the process of uh, cutting out the stem quarter. There we go. These are all the bags of pigs right there. You see the juice in there? We're gonna save the juice. This juice that's rendered naturally by the freezing and throwing out process of the fig. You don't wanna waste the juice. And then uh, notice that they go into the wood processor container. Each one is about to add the lid to it. There we go. Now you see the Thing. So we're not trying to blend it fine. We try to really get it a little, uh, so we don't have big chunks of figs in the pan, and that will help it cook more evenly as well. So you could chop it up with a knife uh, if you're not doing a huge quantity. Here is what it looks like. So you see, still some texture, but no big chunks that won't cook as evenly as the rest of the jam. There we go. I think that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now on the scale to figure out the quantities so we can follow the recipe. Now she's gonna add the juice. This is all this is all fig juice. So that will be part of the jam. Waste not, want not. Of this going into a non-reacting part such as stainless steel or enamel cookware and start cooking it for about uh, 30 minutes and then mix in the dry ingredients, the sugar, stevia and pectin. Then cook it while stirring from time to time for another 30 minutes. Yeah. Lemon juice, all this is in oh, the fruit. Right. Yeah. And we'll continue the cooking process. Cook it for? Um, boil, it. boil it? With a full boil? Yeah. About 30 minutes of a yeah. uh, full boil. Okay. Keep, st really Keep stirring stir from time, time to time. Really often, yeah. Especially after you add the dry ingredients the because sugar, then yeah. it, be it becomes more, uh, more sticky and it can uh, scorch. And you can start seeing the boiling. Can you hear the boiling? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. Now for the sterilization of the rings and the lid, we use boiling water, which you could use steam. For the jars, we often use the dishwasher. We just fill it up and then uh, run it. Uh, you can use soap or not. If, you, if they are all clean pre previously, you just uh, sterilize them with, on the hot water cycle. Now the jam is fully cooked, time to put it in jars. Go about a quarter inch to the top. Needs to keep the, the edges clean. If you have a little too much, you can adjust removing the spoon. After a while, you get the, the hang of it. You can also have a pre-measured ladle that helps you if you do a lot of volume. So it takes out the guesswork. Then before applying the lid, you may want to wipe the edge to make sure there is no product left. If there is product left, the lid may not seal well. Or wiping up the edge to make sure that there will be a proper seal. So everything has been, is being sterilized in hot boiling water and we want to keep everything nice and sanitized. So just that and finger tight 
snug, I call it snug, not, not like a brute. Okay. No brute, no brute action. And then there'll be another process. We will uh, put this on the submerge into water or steam. We can do both ways. Uh, and then boil them for another 30 minutes and then pull them out and let them cool until they start popping. And they do a popping sound to let us know that now they are head tight. Once you check them, you'll see a few that are not popped. These will need to be reprocessed or they can be stored in a refrigerator as refrigerator jam. They won't have their shelf life, but they'll keep for up to a month in a refrigerator. The jars get placed in the steamer. You could use any kind of container. We like to put a little grate, a little separation from the bottom with some kind of round grate or something to elevate the bottom a little bit so the, the glass don't touch the bottom of the pot. That would be an option. Any small square grate would work or we have a round one in there. You can see in the bottom. Anything to elevate a little bit. This is a steamer, so you got several layers you can use. If your pots are not that tall, also for the jam, we don't use it. The very tall. We use the pint size containers and they are not that tall, so, so it works just perfect. So that's on the level. So now that's the second layer of jars. You see them in there? Nice and cozy. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Good. Product chain, several batches of, of jam. Going. is pulling them out and shortly thereafter you're gonna hear a popping sound I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to catch it for you look at that beautiful color when working with steam boiling water always be careful it burns it hurts we'll wipe the top of these so we don't have those watermarks ah you heard that now oh, that was a pop uh, that was a baby pop. Shows like being distracted by a variety of pops. Lollipop. Are you popping or not? Popping or not popping? Some people ask me, can you reuse some of, some of those lids as long as they not they don't show any sign of scratch? Ah, oh, you hit you hit that little pop that I was talking. Of course. As long as you don't see sign of rust, those lids can be reused several times, and so as the ring to hold the lid in place. Once I start seeing a uh, sign of rust, that's it, they, they're gone. They need to be replaced. And they're fairly inexpensive, so the beauty of that, we, you can also reuse those jars over and over and over and over. So it's, uh, it's also a good thing for the environment. We have to do what we can. Et voilà, if you like this video, subscribe and share, and write some comments below. Thank you, and see you soon.